Now I know what you're thinking, summer's finally over. Rain and wind has arrived and the brief bit of affection you had for the UK's climate has been replaced by sheer apathy. There's no way you're going to take your nice modern classic out in this weather, but you can still drive out in something nice. You can still drive out in something really nice. How about a Porsche Turbo S? Only this one's more suited to Dakar than Donington. This KN Turbo S is live for auction on shootandpick.com. The auction platform for car enthusiasts is come right in time for winter and today I'm going to show you what it's actually like to drive. Okay, look, I get it. You're probably asking, what is an SUV doing on shootingbrake.com? Aren't we bona fide car enthusiasts who are focused on driver-focused cars with low sensor gravity, manual gearboxes, responsive chassis? And the answer is yes. However, the KN, especially the 955 KN, the original one, has genuine enthusiast appeal. First off, because this is Porsche's first SUV, they knew that there would be a difficult reception to the concept. So they made sure this was a very, very good product. They made sure it drove like a Porsche should, obviously within the limits of physics. And they also made sure that this being an SUV, it's an actually useful SUV. So it's spacious inside, it's brilliant off-road, it's filled with off-road tech that's genuinely useful. As a result, now 20 years on from the launch of these cars, they have now become a bit of a cult classic, especially in America, but also now more commonly in Europe and the UK. These become a cult classic for their overlanding capabilities. So overlanding is the ability to camp in your car, have a roof tent on top, or have uh, living facilities in the back, and have some slight off-road upgrades, bigger modern snow tires, etc., etc. And then go off-roading, camp out, and this has been proven to be one of the better cars for it in terms of its off-road ability, its reliability, its driver enjoyment, its ownership enjoyment. I feel like if you're a car enthusiast, that's a really cool thing. That's a very, very cool thing. On top of that, when these came out, I hated how they looked. I thought it was absolutely gopping, I'll be honest. Now, when I look at the 955, I see it as a genuinely well-resolved design that's got very taut lines. That rear end is incredible with the all red tail lights, classic Porsche script badge in the middle, the wheels that come on the Type S, amazing. Beyond that, we like to list decent examples of cars on shooting brake, and this is no different. This is effectively a one previous owner car. It's got two former keepers on logbook. One is the company, and then there's the owner of the company when he bought the car from the company. So last owner was 17 years since new. It's the one year only 955 Turbo S model with 513 brake. It's an absolutely stunning condition. The interior is no blemishes, the exterior is no blemishes. It's just come back from the detail. It looks absolutely incredible as you'll see in the video. And it's a spec to have in this color. This color is exclusive to the Turbo S and it's stunning. I really like these in the actual colors or silver. Most of them are in black, which I'm not a huge fan of. I think the black cars have aged quite poorly, whereas the blue with the silver trim and these wheels, honestly, unreal. Bit more about the spec. We've got Nappa leather absolutely everywhere, all over the dash, even the lower dash where you turn the lights on that's surrounded by Nappa. All the seats, obviously, the door cars, the front and rear seats are heated. The heaters go absolutely nuclear. And then on top of that, it comes this 513 brake V8 that does this. Oh, God. Uh, I'll tell you what, it's actually quite disconcerting doing that in a 2.3 ton SUV. It feels like you're breaking the laws of physics. And then when you actually need to stop the car, you've got absolutely incredible brakes that just rip your face off. And then, they, and then it rips your face off again when you hit the loud pedal. And you get this thunderous train-like noise that's a mix of talky, kind of almost American V8. And then this diesel-like turbo whistle that's so addictive. If you ever dreamed of operating heavy machinery, this gives you that satisfaction, whilst also giving you the ability to kind of drive like a 911 turbo at 7 tenths. And I, I know that sounds absurd, but I'm not saying this lightly. I hate SUVs, I'm really, really not into them, but this is incredible. Come away from the drive I've had in this car so far, from actually just genuinely wanting to buy this. I have no purpose for it. I've got no need for this level of practicality, but I want to buy this car. I genuinely, <laughs> genuinely do. It's got this deep sense of mechanical satisfaction to it that I just cannot explain. And I'll tell you what, when it comes to the Porsche engineering, and driving ethos, this is a very authentic representation of that within the limits of an SUV. On top of that, I drove a new model KN Coupe GTS recently. I really didn't like it. I felt like they had basically tried to make 
an M5 on stilts. And they tried to make it drive like a saloon car, but it wasn't a saloon car, it was a two ton jacked up SUV. This, this feels like a four x four. And I mean that in the best possible way, it feels chunky and satisfying. And the steering's quite slow and it has got a bit of body roll and it pitches and dies. But I like that, it's authentic. It's authentic to what this car is and it means that it's actually comfortable. It means that the visibility is great. It means it's got a decent high roof line for you and your passengers. It comes with all the nice authentic things about an SUV, but when you do actually launch it into a corner, if you're running late or whatever, it does actually hang on. So let's break it down piece by piece. The biggest shock for me in this car, well, I suppose it shouldn't have been a shock because it's a Porsche, but the biggest shock was the steering. The steering, you're not gonna believe this, is dripping in feel. Now, it's not wriggling around your hands, obviously. We've got a 2.3 ton car with really wide tires. It does numb out some of the exact road feel in terms of surfaces, but what the steering does do, it loads up really nicely. It's a nice speed, it's not twitchy, but there's no dead zone, it's very accurate. But on top of that, like all the best hydraulic steering setups out there, you get a feeling of knowing exactly what the steering geometry is doing as you load it into a corner. So I'm gonna come into this fast off camber damp sweeper here, very scary corner, especially in a two-ton car like this. And I turn in and the steering goes a little bit light as it builds up negative camber on the outside wheel. You turn in more and then you get the feeling that the cast has built up too much and it's starting to wash out and the steering actually loads up because you're riding on the edge of the sidewall of the tire as the wheel is doing that. And then it goes light again as you start to get understeer. It's so transparent, you have every confidence in being able to find the limits of the front axle, which is just not something you should be able to say about an SUV, especially an SUV that's actually genuinely capable off-road. I think that's incredible and it's shocking because it's just not something I was expecting to be able to have in a car like this. And bear in mind, we've got a three-stage air suspension here with three different comforts, two different ride heights, loads of adjustability, and yet every single setting, the steering retains that beautiful feel to it. It's an absolute joy to use. It makes you genuinely want to attack corners. So that's, that's a real highlight. Next up is this engine. It sounds great. It delivers its best work above 4K. Uh, that's when the turbo has really come on song. But where we've got a four and a half litre V8 here, there's still loads of torque below the boost threshold. So as a result, when you're overtaking, you've got power on demand, really. The engine revs to six and a bit. You don't really need to take it that far. The best work is between four and five and a half and the gearbox keeps you on ball when you're doing that. Day to day, got really good power from 59 RPM onwards, which makes this a lovely town cruiser, great engine. And on top of that, perversely in these, the turbos and turbo S's are actually the most reliable engines out of the bunch. The non-turbo KNV8 has bore score issues. These run a bit cooler because of the amount of performance on offer. They beefed up the cooling system and they've got oil squirters in the bores, which keeps the bores lubricated at all times. Next up is the gearbox, where I believe we've got a ZF six speed here. It's a traditional torque converter auto. It's perfect for this car. Wafts along really nicely in town and the calibration is fantastic. So it kicks down really nicely. You don't need to press off all the way to kick it down. If you're trying to build up halfway, it'll drop down a gear, get you into the power band and you're boosting along nicely. Now the way to drive this car down a country lane like this is to basically try and keep it in boost, but you don't need to work for that. The gearbox just does it for you. The key is to be very liberal with the throttle and constantly just feed it little bits here and there. When you do that, the suspension will load up on the back, specifically on the outer back corner, which is where the grip is. And then if you use the boost to kind of slingshot you out, the car just kind of pitched out around you and it ends up shrinking around you because you feel like you can drive it on the back wheels, like a dune buggy almost. It's a really addictive feeling. And then you combine that with the incredible visibility you have down the country lane. We're driving down one of my favorite test routes, but one of the biggest issues with this route is visibility. We've got quite high hedgerows. Because I'm in a Porsche Cayenne and not a 911, I can see over the traffic in front of me and I can see over the corners and that allows me to place the car extremely accurately down the lane, which makes this a genuinely devastatingly quick point to point bruiser of a car. So what you have is a combination of excellent mid-range torque, a gearbox that's very happy to keep in the power band, brilliant visibility and communicative steering. And then you've got amazing overtaking power. We're not able to use it on this road yet, but we've got amazing overtaking power. And the gearbox is adaptive. It learns from your driving. So just here, it knows that we're cruising now. We're taking over in fifth gear, not sixth gear, 2K RPM at 60. Nudge it into sixth on these steering wheel mounted gearbox control buttons. And we're ticking along at 1800 RPM at 70. That's bonkers. That makes it such a relaxed cruiser and the NVH levels are obviously just brilliant. This car was 130,000 pounds when it was new. In 2006, it feels every bit of that purchase price, especially this example, which is just 
flawless from what I can see. Right, so the steering's great, engine and gearbox makes for a devastating effect combination, but we've got 2.3 tons on offer and 2.3 tons doesn't like to stop. So Porsche have given this car humongous brakes, just bonkers big. They completely fill up those 20 inch wheels. Classic Porsche stuff, the pedal is brilliant. It's very, very progressive, quite long. It's got no dead zone. It's exactly what you want. It's nice and firm. It's not tripping in feel. You're not gonna expect that from a car like this, but they're very, very effective and you can trust them to get you down to the end of the road without fading. The thing is though, even if they weren't good, this brings us on neatly onto what this car is and what it isn't. So if you really wanted to, you could drive this at 10 tenths, right? It gives you all the information you need. It's got great power. The engine revs out all the way to the red line. But we've not been doing that today. We're not going to because the car, it doesn't encourage that. And it's not really what this car is for. It's also not when this car is at its most enjoyable. Where this car is at its most enjoyable is a seven or eight tenths flow. And what that means is, to me, what hard driving is, is hard driving is threshold braking, late braking into a corner, revving the engine up all the way to the red line, using all of the available road within your lane, and just pushing the road and the car as hard as possible. There's very, very few cars, very few roads, and very few times in the day where that could ever be appropriate. And there's some cars that are built for that. In my opinion, my 906 Crow is a great example. That car is at its best at 10 tenths. It's what it wants to be doing. It's nice when you're just getting a flow, but it's at its best 10 tenths. What this car is great at is getting from point to point very briskly, very quickly, but with minimal effort in the sense that you don't need to rev the engine out all the way, but you want to keep it in boost. You want to keep it in the mid range and keep momentum and you want to load up the car in the corners, you want to load up the suspension as much as possible, but you're not going to be decking the brakes, just nudging them to get the weight up front and then accelerating out to get the weight onto the back corner and loading the car up down the side, feeling the grip build up down the side of the car and you're feeling it through the seat of your bum, you're feeling it through the steering, getting loaded up. That's a gorgeous feeling. You feel like you've got this a bit, almost like a 911, but in the 911, you're feeling this pendulous feeling from the back. Here, you're feeling this pendulous feeling from underneath you, where you've got the axes of the car swinging back and forth like that in a very controlled, magnetic feeling. It's a mechanically satisfying car to drive, to hustle about. It's the experience that will completely change your view on SUVs. I don't know if that's a good thing, societally, but, but it will. And I still don't support SUVs generally but when it comes to climate conscious patches, a 20 year old or near on 20 year old car is probably one of the best things you can do because you're saving this from going to landfill, from going to scrap, and you're avoiding getting a new car shipped over across the Atlantic. You're saving a car from being made from raw materials. You're buying something that already exists. You know, all the carbon that's gone into building this car, it's already been locked up into this car. You're not going to be releasing more into the atmosphere. The only carbon you're really releasing is just the fuel you're using when you're driving it. But you don't need to do 20,000 miles a year in this car. You could, you don't need to. You can still enjoy this as a second or third car or as a winter smoke or something just around town on the occasional road trip. As an ownership proposition, this is incredible. It's incredible value for money. It's enjoyable, it's satisfying. It's dripping in character with that engine, the chassis, the material that we got here. This is peak 04 rich. If you're a follower of that trend, which I very much am, I think that's an awesome area for cars. And this is almost peak 2004 cool, yeah. I really want to buy this. This is similar to CLK in the sense that it just blew me away with what I was expecting versus what I actually got. Just absolutely incredible. But also, this is a great town car. And to start with, I'm going to talk about the driving position. Now, my seat, if I wanted to, can go very low. So, all the way down there. I'm basically sitting on the floor there. Most cars I get into, uh, even like modern drive focused cars, which typically have a lot of R&D put into the driving position, I have the seat maxed out down to the bottom of the car. This is the first time I think ever that I've gotten into a car and I've actually raised the seat up a little bit because the way in which you drive this, you want to be able to see down the bonnet and it gives you this command driving position. But I've never liked command driving positions because I always feel quite vulnerable. I feel like the car is going to tip over if I'm sitting too high. But in this, because you've got so much body control, that command driving position is just, it's a really nice feeling. You still feel connected to the car and the chassis, but you're able to place the car really nicely around town and like most Porsches have driven, the way in which this is constructed with the way that the A pillars go and the dimensions of the car, you feel like you know where every wheel is. So it makes it very easy to park. On top of that, steering is beautiful, got loads of lock and the engine and gearbox pull really nicely between one and two K so you can just waft along. You never have to manage the gearbox. So basically, this thing's actually just brilliant around town and you feel very well insulated from rough roads. I'm just gonna put the suspension into comfort mode 
and you'll see an immediate difference there. So compliant, so nice. Floors, it's hard to say really because this car fulfills its use case so well. Obviously, it's not a sports car. You can't get around the laws of physics. So I really can't really say that's a flaw. I have to think about this one to be honest. Well, fuel consumption. You're, you're going to average kind of teens. You might get into the 20s on a run, but that's offset with the fact that the Turbo S is a very reliable car. And because they were 130K car when they were new, they've rarely fallen into the wrong hands. Most of them are very well taken care of with a big history file, just like this one. So as an ownership proposition, they are very, very good. That's not to say that it's a perfect car, but for an SUV, I would say it's as close to being flawless as is really possible. It gives me everything I want from this car and more. There's nothing that really jumps out to me. I mean, it's even good off-road. I'm not gonna test that out for you here for obvious reasons, but <laughs> what a car. As a car to get you through winter and beyond, really, because this is actually special enough to just have all year round. And as a character purchase and twinness, potentially even as an investment future classic, because I do think these are getting to that point, if not already there. I think this is a great, great buy. And on top of that, these are so undervalued. Uh, in Europe, these go for 20 grand plus. I believe someone in America just sold one of these for about 30 grand, had more miles than this, was in worse condition. I listen to that noise. I mean, that's just thunderous. I'm not even pushing it there. That's just getting through the gears. Incredible. So this car is coming live to shootingbreak.com. Shootingbreak.com is an auction platform for car enthusiasts. We love underappreciated gems like this KN Type S955. These are my favorite type of cars to review. Cars that are brimming with character, full of feel, full of their own unique use cases, but they're underappreciated gems. It's not an out and out sports car, fine, but there's so much mechanical joy to be had from this. And you can use it for so many aspects of your day to day life, including off-road adventuring, road trips, overlanding, or just daily driving through town. What a car, honestly, what a car. Now that's it for me. Make sure you tune in next time for some more exciting videos on cars that you love. Shootingbreak.com is your home for enthusiast cars, be it an underappreciated future classic or a bona fide present day icon. Our auction platform is exciting, transparent and simple, and trading with us gives you access to exclusive events, including track days and meets. Make sure you stay subscribed and see you next time.